Hence, Neo Soul Keys. So Neo Soul Keys, an electric piano, Mark One suitcase, Mark One stage, uh, Whirly. We wanted to bring a an experience to uh, that has never been seen before with the electric piano. There's tons of electric piano libraries out there, but we felt that they didn't have enough grit. We felt that it didn't have enough uh, umph, enough. Um, dirtiness. We felt that everything out there just seemed to be cookie cutter. This is how you make a certain sample. You cut it this way, you make it this way. You never leave the grit, you never leave the noise, you cut this stuff out. And we as gospel musicians, we hate cookie cutter stuff. We like to be out of the box. So hence Neo So Keys for the contact version. Then we brought Neo So Keys for the um we brought Neo So Keys for the Reason version. And then we brought Neo So Keys for the Garage Band that didn't work too good on the iOS because Apple cut that off because obviously they realized people was making money from that. So they cut it off. That's okay. So now, here we are now with Neo So Keys for the iOS. And I'm happy to say that it sounds really good. So I am playing this from an iPad 2, all right? This is an iPad 2, and there's the interface. You can see the interface here. Uh, if you do see a little bit of lagging, it's not a lag due to the, uh, the MIDI lagging. It's a lag due to the program that I'm using uh, to, uh, to display it, to make it look that pretty. So the point is that you get the point, you know what I mean? So. All right, so Neo So Keys. Gospel musicians, gospel music. So I was initially not convinced of the iPad. I thought the iPad was a toy. I seen all these apps coming out for the iPad and I'm like, okay, that's a cool synthesizer, but how am I gonna use that? That's a cool beat machine, but like, you're, you know what I mean? So my thing was, they got a whole bunch of cool synthesizers for the iPad, but realistically, I already have Logic. I already have my plugins. If I'm gonna decide between doing professional work and I'm gonna decide between using an iPad to do professional work to play a synth off there and a VST, I'm gonna use a VST. I'm gonna use an audio unit. I'm gonna use a, a sample library that has about five or six gigs of what I want. I'm not gonna use an iPad. So, so I wasn't convinced initially until I said, wait a minute, there's a market. There's a market for that live musician that will love to bring their big old giant 100 pound Mark I suitcase with all the speakers or Mark I stage 1979 and lug it. There is a market for those guys who want to do that. And instead of bringing your laptop, because let's face it, laptop is getting too heavy right now. Instead of bringing your laptop, you can bring your iPad. And so I said, okay, that's my niche. Like I didn't want to come out with a toy. This is not a toy. This is not some kind of cute thing that if you notice on our screen, we do, do not have a playable keyboard because it's not a toy. This is a sound module wrapped up in an iPad. Just like you buy a regular sound module and it doesn't have any keys, this is the same thing. This is a professional grade app. This is not, I'm, we don't, we're not playing toys. We're gospel musicians. We're serious about, our, serious about our music. So this is not a toy, all right? So this is a real life. So my goal was to say, you know what? What if I could bring the same sounds live on a gig and play these live? So, and also there's guys out there that just can't afford a laptop and everything yet. This is your next bet. So if you notice, I'm playing and the quality and the warmth is exactly like you would see. Now, let's start, let's start, let's go over some of this stuff. This knob right here, this knob, as you can see, it all is conducive to my fingers. My fingers are not too big. You know, everything is laid out. It's one big, beautiful screen. I'm loving it right now. So, um, so right now, so the volume control 
controls the sustain samples. For those of you who already have the contact version, this is going to be boring for you. These are the newcomers that don't know anything about gospel musicians trying to figure out if you can trust the company to actually purchase it. So here I am being honest with you. I'm telling you all the pros. I'm telling you all the cons. I'm not that kind of guy that's going to come and just say, oh, it's all good. It's all perfect. It's not all good. It's not all perfect. But I tell you what, before it's over, you're going to want this. So, uh, this controls the sustain samples, okay? The volume of the sustain. So these are the sustain. Oh, sorry, this took a moment. This is so creamy. And it's coming from my iPad. It's ridiculous. All right, sorry, that was a moment, that was beautiful. So, so we got the sustain samples. Yeah, can you tell I'm excited about this a little bit? So here's the sustain, it controls the sustain. All the way down, it's off. All the way up, it's on, obviously. So we have the vibrato, we have the spring reverb, the chorus and everything. So the reason why I wanted to control just the sustain so you can mix the top independent of the bottom. All right, so let's turn this down. <clears throat> let's go over the switches up top. We got our tine. Now, it's more of a high pitch tine. The reason why I wanted a high pitch tine because when you mix a high pitch tine with a beautiful, um, with a beautiful um, Mark I suitcase, it gives you almost a DX7 type of feel. On the stage, we have it a little darker. All right, so now this knob right here is the secret weapon. This is the secret thing that has made my library, I think, hit 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 pretty good heights, you know, God willing. So this is called more dirt. What this is is I actually sampled the dirty part of the tine because watch when I play this by itself. All right, it's pretty, but you can get that in any library. That's that. This is all the other libraries on the market, except for the cream. But this is pretty much anybody can do this. But what adds the character? And you're like, okay, neo soul and urban music is gritty. It's dirty. Let's add this more dirt. Let's kick it all the way up. Let me turn this down just so you can hear how how it adds. Listen to that. You hear that? That's dirt. It just adds another layer. Let me turn it down just to over accentuate it. That's dirt. Woo. That's dirt. All right. So the dirty part of the tines, this was very hard to sample. We had to do some manipulation and go back, but the, the dirty part of the tine is what's important. All right, so that's what has the grit. We got the pedal up and pedal down. When I turn these up and I hit the sustain pedal, and they're not all the same. They're they're happening randomly. It's not just one. Notice they all sound different. Yep, and key down one. That's when you hit your EP and you get a nice bump. All right. Key down two. This is, I love this one. This gives you a toy box type of feel. So, right, let me turn these down. This is the toy box feel. Now that mixed with this more dirt is the secret weapon to this whole thing. You put the sustain together and you just have dirtiness. That's the real feel. That's what a... Now you might not want to be typewriter like that, but I'm just overdoing it. That's beautiful. All right, so let's turn these all down. Uh, key up two. 
Oh, no, let's key up one. That's a. That's just that umph that you feel when you're releasing. All right. And then we have key up two, which is cool. Yep. And then we have the classic release samples. Now, you can't just do the release samples. The release samples have to decay with time. For example, if you hit the keys hard, and let's just turn the releases all the way up. If you just do it like that, then you'll hear a high release. But if I hold it for a while and a while and you let them decay, the release should go down. As you hear the release, you barely heard that. Now this is still a demo version, so we're gonna change that, but that's how a release is supposed to happen. So we did that with the release, the key up two and the key up ones. So they reacted to the decay time of, uh, of how long you're holding down the notes for the, a more realistic approach, all right? And then we have the awesome bark. Let me let you hear the bark by itself. That's just that extra So it just gives you that, that bark, and you have to mix it pretty well with these two. Gives you more, more of a plaque, more of a bark. All right. So we got the bark. All right. Let's let's uh, let's let's make a let's let's do something here. Let's make a awesome. Okay. What would I do? All right. Nope. Let's go over the effects. Let's go over the effects. All right. We got the chorus. It's a little too much. Ooh, warms it up. Ooh. That's still too much on the depth. So that's beautiful there. And then we got the, let's turn it off so you can hear the reverb. Just enough, just enough. Let's turn it all the way. Sorry, let's turn this all the way up just to give you a. There we go. There's the reverb and the classic vibrato. Yeah. Let's turn these up. Now. Processor wise, I'm using the iPad 2. I wouldn't go with an iPad 2 if I'm doing live stuff because it's not now. So look at the meters down here. Let's go over here. So let's let's go over the interface a little bit. Um, we got the back button. The back button takes you back here where you get the other EPs. Right now they're free. You'll be able to download them and use them. Uh, on a trial ver as a trial basis, so I don't want to see no complaints. I should see zero complaints because iOS people are brutal. I should see zero complaints. I should have all five stars because you have a chance to try it first. You have a chance to try it first, and so you'll get a chance to try it. You'll get a chance to use it. If you don't like it, don't buy it. <laughs> so so you get a chance to try it. 15 minute demo. It craps out. Then it comes back, so it's it's a little bit of a nuisance, but we give you enough to try it. Um, so try it, and then you get a chance to use it. We have the suitcase. Uh, we have the suitcase, the stage, and the whirly. Um, I'm gonna go into these a little bit more, but I just wanted to give you a little update on this. We're gonna go over the interface a little more. So here we are, part one: Neo Soul Keys Gospel Musicians for iOS. All right, coming at you. Hey, this is Gospel Musicians coming back at you. Part two. All right. So part two is uh, let me make sure everything's recording. We got everything good. All right. So we got the we got the, the overhead like this. All right. So part two, we're going to talk about a little bit the navigation. All right. So as you can see, the home screen right here gives you um, the the all three of the uh, EPs. OK, so we got all three of the EPs. We got a stage. We got the suitcase and we got the whirly. The store, 
is where you would go to to purchase. You can hit more info, blah, 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 to get it. Help is the documentation, which is in iBooks format. So what you would do is you would open in iBooks. I wouldn't open in Dropbooks. You would Dropbox. You would open in iBooks, and that's where you you would uh, open it up, and you would get the documentation there, and it has videos and demonstrations too. Same thing here. So the key is you must have iBooks installed. iBooks doesn't necessarily come installed in your iOS. You have to download it, but it's free. All right. So let's go back home. Home is where you play. Home is where you do everything. All right, so let's go to the stage. All right, let's count how long it takes to boot up. All right, let's see if it's realistic. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000, six 1,000. So six seconds pretty much is what it takes to load. So let's just. Now, once again, let's talk about the little connections. I have the connection kit right here. I have the connection kit to my MIDI connected directly to my Motif XF, okay? The thing about it, most keyboards within the last five years come with a USB MIDI, all right? So that USB MIDI goes out and it actually plugs up into the iPad. The thing is, there's certain smaller um, MIDI devices that require power and the power is not strong enough to drive it. So, so what you do is you get your connection port kit. This is old school. Once again, I'm demonstrating on the iPad 2. You get your connection kit and you just take the MIDI right from the Motif right on in. The Motif Mo X works. Um, I'm assuming that the Korg and all those other ones work too. Please correct me right in the comments. I haven't checked them all out yet, so I don't have every single keyboard. So uh, you would have to check that out or, or look on some other websites and look on Google. So as it stands, this actually works. So it, it works. And um, and, and I'm playing directly. There's no lag. Um, here's an update. Uh, I tried the Elisa's IO dock. It's messing up. I tried to contact the Elisa's. I told them, hey, I'm coming out with an awesome product. I'm coming out with NeoSo Keys. I have the beta version of iOS 6.1. Can you please test it out? Because I'm seeing lagging. I would really like to sell this for you. And they said that they didn't test beta versions. So they wait for the version to come out. So as it stands right now, I cannot... Uh, I cannot advise the Lisa's I.O. doc on version 6.1.1 because um, because there are inter there there the the MIDI actually messes up. So there's some other stuff coming out that I'm going to demonstrate, and uh, once it comes in, it's going to be good. I'm going to be using the um, I'm going to try to use the new uh, Apogee Duet which has some awesome features. It's core MIDI built right in. And so I'm going to, I'm going to try and demonstrate some other units with the Neoso keys to see if they work. Uh, if Elisa's is watching this right now, uh, I would love an update. If you could email me or something, let me know if there's an update uh, to see if it works. But as it stands right now, testing the Elisa's IO doc, uh, the, the MIDI is, is, is messed up. So our stage, our Neo Soul stage is the dirty stage. This is what I call the hip hop Neo Soul electric piano. Because you see guys on YouTube and they're jamming in the background and they got a they got a stage EP and they're just killing it. And so the stage is is a little different. It's not as creamy as the uh, suitcase and it's also a little more grungier. It's a little more dirty. So that gives you that dirty kind of feel. Now when I add the more dirt right there, you hear that? That's where the dirt comes from. So that's the dirty part. We, we hardly add a... You can't add a vibrato on it, but... A stage doesn't come with a vibrato, so I like it. I like to keep it dirty. If I'm going to use a vibrato, I use it with the suitcase. Now, so, so let's talk about processor. Let's talk about, uh, let's, let's talk about, um, this is an iPad 2. As I said previously, I wouldn't recommend this iPad 2 to work with NeoSo keys yet because there's some power limitations. And let me just crash it. I'm going to crash it in front of you. 
Once again, I have a bad habit of being honest. I'm not the kind of guy that's going to try and sell you something that's not going to work. I want it to work. Um, uh, let's look. pay attention closely to uh, the processor as, as I'm just doing crazy stuff. As you see, you can hear some clicking. You can hear a little bit of popping. That's because it's like really working the RAM. If you look at the RAM usage on the, uh, the RAM usage is about 214 meg. And the iPad 2 comes with 500 meg of RAM. Don't get RAM mixed up with flash RAM. If you got a 32 gig iPad and a 64 gig iPad and a 16 gig iPad, y'all both have the same system RAM. System RAM is capped off at 500 meg. The available RAM is, is, is storage RAM. So don't get storage RAM mixed up with a uh, system RAM. You move up to the iPad 3 and you get a gig of system RAM. You move up to the iPad 4 and not only do you get a gig of system RAM, but you get a better processor. So our tests have come back that the iPad 4 with everything on, slamming down on the keys, you can crest it up maybe at about, uh, you can crest it up at about, at about maybe 70%. That's the max it'll go. Here, unfortunately, so I'm fine. As I'm down at 60%, as I get at 50%, as I get up to about 60%, get a little bit of crack and I was about 120%. So, so what I recommend, if you only have an iPad 2 and you're trying to run this, you hear the crackling. get a little bit you get a little bit of distortion and maybe we can work some out and maybe fix that but distortion that's usually coming because of processor and RAM so you're running out of resources so I would say on the iPad 2 if you really want to use the iPad 2 you probably wouldn't have to use all these effects because remember um, the more you use the more notes you use and uh, the more notes you use the more processor it does now, it, this really doesn't turn down polyphony, but it seems to do a lot better. So let's just do the same thing. See, it seems to work a little better. So it is usable. The iPad 2 is usable. Um, so let's, let's turn. You can't quite dual worldly. So let's turn some of this stuff down. Uh, so let's look at some of the other aspects of this. So going from left to right, we got the back button. MIDI sources. If you look up MIDI sources, um, we got local. Um, uh, iOS has an ability to do MIDI th through Wi-Fi, which is pretty darn cool. So we have that capabilities just in, just in case you want to do that. Um, to close this menu, to close this box, you just go back down to MIDI sources and it closes so on and then off. And then presets, which is cool, you can add a preset. So you uh, hit plus and then you say test. Uh, okay. And there you go. And then you hit presets again and you're off. So presets, you're right there. And so let me do something here. Let me change this all up change it all up turn the turn this on turn this on change it all up now you see it's changed now let's go to presets hit it hit the sorry uh, activate sorry about that we activated it presets down I got a little glare on my screen and it goes back to everything it was before so we got the presets uh, the panic button uh, it just in case you get stuck notes um, main stage on Apple's main stage has a panic button uh, logic contact has a panic button a panic button doesn't mean that you program something wrong or your samples are messed up 
It just really is what happens in the nature of digital audio. Sometimes you get stuck notes. You got a panic button down there on your logic. You got a panic button on your main stage, panic button on contact. It just happens sometimes. So just in case you have a panic, you just hit the panic and it stops it. And you can go back, especially in live performance. Let's do this intensity right there. So there we go right there. And you got the treble, but treble, bass boost. And then so just to give you an idea of how you're doing, we gave you the CPU usage. That's the CPU that is used. And then we gave you the RAM usage. That's the RAM that it takes up. So I tried my developer and we've kind of worked. We tried to keep the RAM for you iPad 2 users that just really want to use it. We tried to keep the RAM down to about 200 meg. So what I would suggest is uh, when you're on your iPad, the first thing you want to do to get this working, to optimize it, is to double click and close everything down. Close everything down to make sure nothing's running in the background. And now, um, the cool feature about uh, the iOS is that it runs in the background. It runs in the background. What does that mean? Now, because it runs in the background, you can open up your GarageBand and play along with your GarageBand, okay? So, so I've never done that, and uh, I will demonstrate that later. So, that's the reason why we wanted to, to run it in the background, because we want it, because iOS right now, it doesn't have the ability for you to run a whole bunch of different apps and take this music app and link it with this music app and do that. So we understand that. So I told my developer, let's, let's see if we can run it in the background. And when you run it in the background, you'll be able to run your other apps. All right. So uh, the next thing you want to do to optimize it, you want to put it in airplane mode. Now I can't put it in airplane mode now because I'm run I need the Wi-Fi to, to go back to my system. So airplane mode allows you to, you're not gonna get any emails, you're not gonna get any interference or anything coming through, it shuts everything down. So between turn it in airplane mode and closing everything down, down here, you're good to go. All right, so I didn't wanna close that down. So we got there and here you go. So this is the introductory, the introduction to Neo so Keys iOS iPad. If you want more information, visit NeoSoKeys.com. We already have information about who we are and our Neo so Keys. So um, it's let's go back. It's a free app. Well, it's not completely free because uh, you're going to have some ads coming in. It's it's not completely free because we have a timeout, but we wanted to give you a chance to try it. Uh, we know you're not going to invest in something that you can't try. So we give you an opportunity to try it, uh, support us. We thank you for everybody who supported us. And uh, so once I get my iPad 4, uh, hopefully we'll come back with some live demos to see, uh, uh, just see some cats jamming with it live. All right. So gospel musicians coming at you. Neil So Keys for iOS. We're out.